Hi everybody, thanks for being here today. My name is Jesse Gary. I'm the CEO of Century Aluminum Company. We're the largest producer of aluminum in the United States, and we operate the Goose Creek Smelter here in South Carolina. Very proud to be operating here in the Low Country, and it's my great honor today to introduce Governor Henry De Dargan McMaster of Columbia. He became the 117th Governor of South Carolina on January 24th, 2017, following then-Governor Nikki Haley's appointment as the United States Ambassador to the United Nations. He was elected to a full term as governor in November of 2018 and re-elected in November of 2022. Governor McMaster has led a strong and vibrant South Carolina economy, announcing more than 86,400 new jobs with over $36.5 billion in new capital investment in the state. Governor. Thank you. Well, I appreciate everybody being here. This is a, this is a good announcement today. Century is putting more money into their operation. Uh, as a, you know, it is a, it's a large operation. And as Mr. Gary mentioned, uh, as reflected in his remarks, it's prospering. And that's a good thing for South Carolina. It is, it is great news when a, an industry or a business moves in or opens up, but it's equally great news when one is expanding, is doing well, and has confidence in our state and in our people and in the workforce. And one of the things that is making this possible at Century is our technical college system and our workforce. When you combine the people of South Carolina with the education and training that they need, there's no job that they can't handle, and people all around the world are discovering that. So we're on the move. This is just one more example, and I would remind everyone that aluminum is important for a lot of things. We must have 30 businesses in our state that deal with aluminum, but it is important for our national security. And there's nothing more important right now than our national security. So here again, we in South Carolina with our eight major military bases, all of the things we do, the great prosperity that we're having, we're having a, an enormous impact, an outsized impact on the national security of our nation. So it's a pleasure to be here for this announcement today and we look forward to more. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you all again for being here. My name is Joey Von Nessen. I'm a research economist with the Darla Moore School of Business at the University of South Carolina. And I'm very pleased to be here to announce these new findings of an economic impact study that we've conducted recently, documenting the economic impact of Century Aluminum and the Mount Holly smelter specifically on Charleston and on the state of South Carolina as a whole. Now, as many of you know, of course, manufacturing has been one of South Carolina's primary economic engines for years, so this is uh, certainly nothing new in terms of looking at manufacturing's contribution to our economy. And this includes primary aluminum and metal production, uh, which has been largely part of the manufacturing cluster over, over time. And although aluminum manufacturing has faced headwinds over multiple decades due to international competition, aluminum production at Century's Mount Holly smelter has nevertheless remained a significant economic driver in the local region. And this is especially true in recent years. Uh, so for example, since 2016, production activity at the Mount Holly smelter has increased by about 25% which has resulted in a correspondingly higher rate of local purchasing activity on the part of the, the Mount Holly smelter. And this has in turn led to increased levels of job creation and income creation for tr local Charleston residents and for South Carolina residents overall. So our goal in this study was to specifically document the current economic impact of Century Aluminum and the Mount Holly smelter on both Charleston and South Carolina. So how do we do this? How can we estimate the economic impact of Century Aluminum? Well, there are four principal conclusions that come out of the study that we have recently completed that emerge from the results uh, and from the estimates that I want to share with you this morning. First, we can observe that Mount Holly currently produces about 166,000 metric tons of aluminum annually. And this production activity requires a direct employment base of 455 workers at the smelter, at the Mount Holly smelter itself. And we estimate in this study that these business operations generate a total economic impact of about $773 million per year. 
The total economic impact of Mount Holly is approximately $773 million each year on the state of South Carolina. Now, this impact is a reflection not just of the operations of Mount Holly itself, but also of the new demand that Mount Holly creates for local materials and services from the many in-state suppliers that it works with, as well as all the local businesses supported by the employees as they spend their wages in the local economy with a variety of, of local businesses. Second, Mount Holly supports a total of 1,439 jobs across the state of South Carolina that go along with that $773 million annual economic impact. And this is far more than those 450 jobs at the smelter itself, of course. And these additional jobs are created from the many in-state suppliers that I just mentioned, as well as the local businesses that are supported by Mount Holly employees. And we can specifically say that the employment multiplier effect associated with Mount Holly is 3.2, meaning that for every 10 jobs created at the Mount Holly smelter, we see an additional 22 jobs created elsewhere in South Carolina for a total of 32 jobs. And this employment multiplier is very important. Uh, it's a very important summary statistic that gives us a good snapshot of what this impact means for South Carolina, because it's nearly twice the rate or rather nearly twice as high as that of the average industry multiplier in South Carolina, implying that Mount Holly generates a higher return on employment for the state than most other businesses of comparable size. So that begs the question as to why Mount Holly would generate such a high multiplier effect relative to many other industries. Because remember, the multiplier effect is essentially just a measure of local spending. To what degree does the Mount Holly smelter uh, purchase materials locally from local suppliers within Charleston and within South Carolina. So what businesses is Mount Holly supporting? Well, there are many, of course, but the primary reason for this high multiplier and why it's so much higher than, than the state average is the significant use of local trucking and shipping companies, the Port of Charleston, and the logistics sector more generally in order to bring raw materials to the smelter for production. So in other words, Mount Holly relies significantly on local shipping firms and by supporting this industry is also supporting higher demand and additional job creation. Point number three, Mount Holly contributes to high employment quality. So we've talked about a $773 million impact, about 14, greater than 1,400 jobs, and also high employment quality. And this can be observed directly by examining the average wage levels of jobs supported by the smelter. So if we examine, again, those roughly 1,400 jobs supported directly and indirectly by Mount Holly across South Carolina, we find that the average wage of these jobs totals about $78,000 per year, which represents a 46% wage premium over the average job in South Carolina as a whole. In addition, this wage premium increases to 90%, 90 percent, 90 percent, if we just examine the wage levels of the direct employment base at the facility itself, at the smelter itself. And these wage premiums are especially important because they reflect Century Aluminum's investment in the local community, generating high quality jobs that support local residents. And these jobs also help to support a diverse employment base. So for example, roughly 59% of the current Mount Holly workforce is African American, compared to 23% of the Charleston Tri-County population as a whole, and just 11% of the aluminum manufacturing industry nationwide. Point number four, and finally, the Mount Holly smelter is currently operating at about 75% capacity. Now, why is this important? Because it implies that future changes in market conditions could lead Century to scale up production and further increase its economic footprint in the region. If the Mount Holly smelter were to increase production to full capacity from where it is today, this study estimates that its annual economic impact would increase from 773 million, its current impact today in 2024, to more than 892 million overall. This would also increase the number of jobs supported either directly or indirectly from the current level of 1,439 to approximately 1,920. Or to put this another way, if the Mount Holly smelter increased production levels to full capacity from where it is today, it would generate more than 400 additional jobs either directly or indirectly across the Charleston Tri-County region with a wage premium, again, of about 46% over the average job in South Carolina. So to sum up, Century Aluminum's Mount Holly smelter currently maintains an economic impact of 773 million on the state of South Carolina. 
This is associated with more than 1,400 high-wage jobs across the state that pay a 46% wage premium over the average job in South Carolina. This level of job creation also reflects Century Aluminum's investment in the local community, generating high-quality jobs that supports local residents and a diverse employment base. So these results clearly show that Mount Holly plays a vital role in the long-run economic health, not only of Goose Creek, but also the broader Charleston Tri-County region and the state of South Carolina as a whole. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Senator Brian Adams. I represent a majority of the Goose Creek area. And the doctor kind of explained everything very well. Uh, so Century Aluma has been there since 1995. They were one of two that came into the country at the time that was operating with the aluminum that they do. And it has made a great positive impact for the city of Goose Creek as well as the county of Berkeley. As the doctor was talking about, there's a 90% uh, increase of their wages there compared to everywhere else in the state. And it, that's a good thing for those who do work there. There are, uh, as in 2021, the, the uh, Century Aluminum added the third smelter, which increased our productivity. And hopefully in the near future, we can get that fourth smelter going so we can add those jobs that, that uh, the area needs. Um, Century Aluminum is very positive for the community as well. Just for an example, a couple years ago, we had an impact with a very cold uh, winter. Century Aluminum worked with the community and the electric co-ops in the area, and basically they reduced their power intake, which it did not, so that way everybody's power was able to stay on and we did not have a shortage of power to keep everybody warm. So that's the kind of company Century Aluminum is. I think it is a, uh, something great for the community to help out where they can, and uh, they're definitely there for us when we need them. So I want to thank you all again for coming. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Governor. Uh, I very much uh, appreciate the opportunity to come and speak about Century Aluminum and its impact uh, on the city of Goose Creek and our surrounding area. And what I'd like to do is emphasize what Dr. Van Essen said uh, about their impact outside of the fence around Century Aluminum uh, and what that's meant. Specifically, I want you to think about family-owned businesses in and around the city of Goose Creek impacted by Century Aluminum. And there are three specific that I can think of. JM Foundry, which has supplied the uh, housings and hooks for Century Aluminum for over 40 years, is a family-owned business right up Highway 176. Linton Mechanical and Allstate Crane is a family-owned business right across the street from the entrance to Century Aluminum, who has supplied and been a vendor to Century Aluminum since their inception over 40 years ago. And Charleston Steel and Metal, another family-owned business right across the street from Century Aluminum, who has provided service to that, to that plant for over 40 years. Their impact is far, so much greater than the 450-plus employees they currently have. It is to the greater community in and around them. It emphasizes so much the importance of manufacturing in America. No other industry, no other commercial enterprise has the impact on its community as manufacturing. And I think it, it, it underscores the importance of bringing manufacturing back to America, back to South Carolina, and particularly in my case, to the area of the low country. Keep, again, to, to, to reiterate, manufacturing makes the difference in our community. Forty years ago, there were 25-ish aluminum smelters in America. Today, there's four. I think I have that right. Today, there are four. Why is that? It's become increasingly more difficult to be an aluminum smelter, obviously, in the United States of America. And it's really important that we keep the one that we have in our area and encourage them to continue to grow and make the impact that, they, that they've made. So I thank them very much for their commitment. Uh, thank them very much for sticking through the difficult times. And I look forward to their continued growth and getting back to their full production. Thank you all. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Matt Aboud. I am the Senior Vice President for Strategy and Business Development at Century Aluminum, and it's an honor to be here today. I'd like to thank Governor McMaster for your support and the entire state of South Carolina for allowing us to call Goose Creek home for over 40 years. 
During that time, the Mount Holly smelter has employed thousands upon thousands of skilled workers to produce this fantastic metal. Aluminum is lightweight, yet strong, it's infinitely recyclable, and is used to make so many of the products in our daily lives. From beverage cans and foil, to windows and doors, to electric transmission cables, to cars and airplanes, aluminum keeps your family safe and our country safe. It truly is the metal of the future. However, we can't take this for granted. During the 21st century, China has grown its aluminum smelting business from nearly nothing to become the world's largest producer of aluminum, making more than half of the complete world's aluminum needs today. They did this with government support and subsidies, and then flooded the Western world with cheap exports, driving virtually everyone out of business. When Mount Holly opened its doors in 1980, the United States was the world's largest producer of aluminum, with 30 smelters in operation. Today, the U.S. represents about 1% of the world production, and there are only four smelters running in the U.S. today. Proudly, Mount Holly is one of them. The good news is that over the last 15 years, our industry has started to fight back. Several aluminum trade groups have fought for and won trade protections. Today, there are anti-dumping duties on China and other countries across a wide range of products. But bad actors continue to find ways to, ev to evade these protections, and today, at this very moment, there is another trade case pending in Washington. And thanks to the Trump administration, who in 2018 introduced Section 232 tariffs to protect our national security, we have been trying to level the playing field. But the fight is far from over. Most recently, the Russian invasion of Ukraine sent energy prices skyrocketing. This event led to the further curtailment of U.S. aluminum capacity and the permanent closure of several smelters in Europe. Yet, during this time, the Russian monopoly producer of aluminum has continued to produce unabated and is now flooding the international exchanges with its metal as, co as consumers with a moral compass have increasingly turned their backs on a producer who is openly supporting the Russian war machine. But the outlook for U.S. aluminum and the Mount Holly smelter is bright. The global mega trends of light weighting vehicles, of making our electricity grids more robust, of making our homes more energy efficient, and the moving away from single source plastics all support the future consumption of aluminum. The country needs Mount Holly. In fact, the country needs more Mount Holly. We recently entered into a new three-year power agreement with our partners at Santee Cooper, and when the economic conditions are right, we hope to bring Mount Holly back to its full production capacity once again. I'd like to thank Dr. Van Essen for his economic impact study, and Century is proud to employ the nearly 500 workers and help create the nearly 1,000 additional indirect jobs. Our wages are over 40% above the average wage in South Carolina, and we provide an income that supports families in the low country. We are proud that Mount Holly is the most diverse aluminum smelter in the country, with almost 60% of our workers being people of color, and we are proud to continue to grow this facility and this industry. We appreciate the support of our communities, Goose Creek, Berkeley County, and the state of South Carolina. Together, we're gonna to continue to grow. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Gary had to go catch a plane. He, he's, he's, he's working. I bet you weren't expecting to hear how we were so directly connected with what's going on in Europe and Russia today, were you? But that's the way it is. That's why it's so important for us to have these industries that are, that are, are strong. And I'll remind you again, as the mayor said, we, we are, this is a manufacturing state, among other things, despite all the natural beauty and all of that. We make things. and. Uh, we make fighter planes in Greenville, passenger planes in North Charleston, and vehicles all over the state, and batteries and tires and everything else. But the fact that we, that we are a manufacturing state, among other things, produces that multiplier effect in all of these other careers for people. So this is, this is very important, and this expansion today is a sign of confidence and a, a sign of a, a great future for our state. Does anyone have a question?
No, it's a, it's a great question, but you know, the reality is uh, the most, if you, if you survey customers and you ask them what criteria do they use to select a supplier, uh, the number one criteria always is on-time delivery. You can't produce if you don't have it. And the aluminum industry can have a very, very long supply chain. If you're buying aluminum from the Middle East, you have to order it four months in advance, it has to get put on a boat, it gets transshipped at some destination, it gets to a port here, gets offloaded, it takes a long time. If you buy from us, we can take the order and in three days deliver it to you. So it's really about the supply chain, it's the, uh, it's the, it, it's the guarantee of supply, it's the um, responsiveness, and of course the closer you are, the more uh, likely you are to collaborate together on developing products for your customer. Well, when we restarted the uh, 25, so the, the, the facility had been running around 50% production capacity up until uh, 2019, 2020. We invested over $75 million to bring the remaining, to bring 25% of it back online. So we're currently running at 75% capacity. And we would say that to bring the remaining 25% on would take about the same level of investment. But of course, that's just the direct investment in getting the equipment needed and the materials to bring the facility online. Of course, in addition, we'd have to hire uh, several hundred more employees, and with all the associated um, spending required to get them trained and get them onboarded, you know, we're, we're talking somewhere in the neighborhood of approximately $100 million. Well, you know, the, the smelter operates at a very high temperature, and so the, the challenge is that when you, when you stop a smelter, everything cools to room temperature and then it becomes frozen. So you have to literally disassemble everything. It'd be like, um, you know, if you were making concrete and then all of a sudden let it, let it harden, you know, you have to drill it out. So, you know, when you, when you stop a facility, you almost then have to restart from scratch. So this requires us to bring in all sorts of materials to line our, what we call, pots and it requires us having um, a series of anodes and cathodes because you're, we're creating an electrical current inside the pots. So it's, uh, it's a lot of materials, it's a lot of uh, long lead time materials, and then you have to go uh, uh, pot by pot by pot, so it takes a lot of time as well, and you need a lot of workers who are trained in order to how to do that. I'm sure you're aware back in September there were four uh, instances where there were emissions of mm. the dust into the community. What was your word to the community of East Creek and Berkeley County who were in Sure. Well, we worked very closely with uh, Mayor Habib on that, and we had some town hall meetings, and we actually have a website right now which is still being updated with, uh, with any relevant information, but due to an ongoing legal issue, we just can't comment further on that. So, so no word to the community about why you can trust them greatly? No, we just can't comment on that. Yes. Yes, sir. Oh, I mean, it's, it's not just a, a South Carolina problem, it's a national problem. I mean, our grids have become more and more stressed due to increasing demand and the, the transition we are getting away from fossil fuels and more onto renewables. So uh, this is not a unique situation here, but for us, uh, we are a very, very large consumer of power. So of course, um, in order for us to feel comfortable to restart, we have to know that that power is available. And as, um, as uh, Senator Adams mentioned, I mean, there are times when there are uh, weather issues and the grid becomes really stressed. And for us, we have a unique challenge in that we can't give away the power for more than a couple hours before our molten aluminum becomes frozen and becomes hard and, and really destroys parts of the plant. So we have some flexibility and we work with uh, Santee Cooper on being able to contribute that energy back in times of emergency, uh, but there's a limited duration as to how long we can do that. So the, uh, the consistency and availability of power is, is key for us.
Thank you, Senator. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, I think I would go back to what Mr. Ruby said, talk about where Century Aluminum was uh, and, and where they would like to go. They were an employer of over 600 people. Uh, and when they went to half capacity, obviously roughly half of those em employees uh, left the company. So them going back to full capacity, Michael, doesn't necessarily make an enormous impact on the infrastructure needs of our area. Uh, in that a lot of those employees, I can promise you, just because I know a lot of them, would love nothing more than to go back to work at Century Aluminum. So the opportunity is for folks to go back rather than new folks coming in necessarily for Century Aluminum. To your larger point, um, infrastructure will never catch up with growth. It's a good problem to have. And I've been to communities in and around South Carolina who are not experiencing the growth problems that we're experiencing in Goose Creek, Berkeley County, and the greater Charleston area. I would much rather deal with the growth problems that we have rather than the shrinking problems than those other communities have. To that end, it's how we develop, how we grow. Uh, we have to go back to a growth that makes sense and creates less impact on our infrastructure. And all of those things are possible. It takes a community effort. It'll take the entire Tri-County area uh, to, to grow properly so that we have less of an impact on that infrastructure than we could otherwise. Well, we've been doing that and been investing in the port as well, which, as you know, <clears throat> is the deepest port on the East Coast. Big ships can go in any time, any tide, any day. It's a wonderful thing. That is a, that's a great asset. Our interstate system, of course, is, is a remarkable one, and we are investing. We are, we are ahead of our of schedule on our 10-year plan to work on those, those big roads. We were o opened up a uh, announced, uh, celebrated a a widening of I-26 going down towards Charleston just recently, and Secretary Hall informed us that every year that intersection there of I-95 and I-26 is traversed by three million cars every year to give and some trucks, of course, to give you an idea of the traffic. So I know that the county is working hard and been trying to determine the best thing to do, and we are playing a role in that as well. But as the mayor said, we, we can't keep up with it because we just keep on growing. But we're, we're trying to be as, as wise and strategic as we can be to put the assets in the places where they're needed and uh, not to have to make mistakes, not make mistakes in, in um, wasting time and wasting money. With the port being as big as it is, would you like to see more investment in the country? I'd like, in the country? In the low country. Well, yeah. We, we, need to, we need to have good roads. Those that we have need to be repaired, and those that we need to be widened and strengthened and added, we need to do that too. But there's not an unlimited amount of money or an unlimited amount of time. So we have to be careful and be strategic. Time for two more questions. Thank you, gentlemen. Good work. Thank you.